Campbell. There's no secret. There's no shortcut. Everything that is alive is conscious. Be silent. Be still and know God. Until you feel worthy, it ain't going to happen. Rigorous, ruthless, disciplined focus. You have to get to a place where you can work on yourself. If you are looking to live at the tip of the spear when it comes to health optimization, join my private membership group, Fully Optimized Health. Dot com and get the latest and greatest on hormone optimization, peptides, fitness, fat loss, and most importantly, raising your vibration. Again, go over to fullyoptimizedhealth.com and sign up today. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you may be around the world. I am Jay Campbell, and of course, you are watching the Jay Campbell podcast. And I'm very excited today to be joined in my stream yard virtual studio, which is seemingly being updated from a software codec standpoint by the hour, Dr. Judson Brandeis. Doc, what's going on, brother? How are you? Oh, I'm doing great, Jay. Thank you so much for having me on. It's an honor to have you. So guys, let me give you his bio. Um, first off, let me just say that uh, he sent me his book, which is the first book that I've ever actually read that's bigger than the TOT Bible. So God love this man. I think he was smart enough to actually uh, leverage himself and have other people write some of the chapters rather than my insane person asked that did thousand scientific studies and wrote it myself. I did have an editor, of course, but um, it's amazing. It's a great book. Uh, I give you a lot of credit. We'll talk about it in the thing, but uh, for his bio, he is an award-winning urologist. He's based in Northern California. He went to UCLA. We will hold that against him. Fight on. Uh, sexual medicine expert, clinical researcher, physician, educator, and a caring clinician and surgeon. Yeah, you're also a surgical resident. I mean, a surgical surgeon. So that's awesome too. So uh, I like to get my um, guests' take on what is going on on the planet. Uh, you know, you can look at the planet right now from obviously any perspective or means. You can look at it as glass half full, glass half empty. I mean, I always stay glass half full. You know, I call myself a, a new earth architect, you know, uh, bringing people to quote unquote the golden age. But it's definitely a telling time right now, Judson. Uh, I'm going to call you Doc and Judson, just so you know, on the show, whenever, whenever that comes up. So hopefully you're okay with that. But uh, what what is your take? I mean, are you, I said on my last show, I've done three today. You're my fourth show. So hopefully my brain can keep it together. But uh, what what is your take? Are you a buyer of humanity or a seller? <laughs> yeah, I'm always a buyer. Awesome. Yeah, I'm always a buyer. I have uh, four... Uh, teenage kids and they're really bright and I see some of the amazing things that that they're doing and their friends are doing and I'm just really optimistic for what the future holds because I think there are some really superstar uh, youngsters out there that will kind of save us old folks from the follies of uh, <laughs> of what we've done. That's awesome that you have four teenagers. So I have a 14 year old and a 12 year old daughter. Uh, what are their ages? I have actually a 20 year old now, 18 and two 16 year olds. Oh, so you have twins? Twins, yeah. That's awesome. Did you guys use uh, fertility meds? No. Wow. That's amazing. Does it's your happening. wife, I would assume your wife does not work? Uh, she works a lot harder than I do. She does. Like, when I say that, you <laughs> yeah, she, like, oh, uh, she's, she's a non she's trained as a dentist. Uh, she's non practicing now, but she runs our supplement company and she helps out in my office. And so, Dude, that's then, awesome. Yeah. yeah, I was going to ask you about the supplements too, because I appreciate you sent those to me too. Uh, I did use them for like three or four weeks, you know, whether or not they actually, you know, you know, truthfully, did I notice anything? Probably not, but I'm already, you know, hyper endothelial optimized. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. I use a surgically precise dose of Cialis and of course I'm on therapeutic testosterone. So, I mean, I didn't really notice, but is that possible for me? So, you know, we can talk about that, but again, thank you for sending that to me. And that's awesome that your wife runs a supplement company because- <laughs> As a guy who sold two supplement companies in my life, like that's the hardest job in the it's world. It's tough. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, man, like the day that I stopped being a CEO of a supplement company was the greatest day of my life because I was like, I don't have to go to bed laying at night now wondering if we're going to run out of cash in 45 days. <laughs> wow, that's awesome, man. Well, I mean, your wife must be amazing, dude. So good, she good is. on you, man. Um, okay, cool. So talking point number one, uh, the single biggest health challenge facing American men. I think I know what it what, I, what it is, but why don't you tell us? Well, I think it's just men themselves and our mindset. So 100 years ago, men lived one year less than women. Now men live five years less than women. Yeah. 
Yeah. And the longevity of middle-aged men in the United States is actually declining. And it's yeah. declining because of alcohol, because of suicide, and because of opioids. Yeah. And so men are in big trouble. But if you look at men are half as likely to visit the doctor as women. Right. Right. There's this ethos that we're strong. We don't have to take care of ourselves. Everything's going to work out great. You know, the pain's just going to go away. And in the end, that's not true. So I think that the biggest stumbling block really is ourselves and getting over this idea that reaching out for help is a weakness. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, well, I want to just like expound. Uh, so, so, you know, a hundred years ago, you also know that, you know, natural testosterone levels were what doc, I mean, at least two to oh. three times, two to three times what they are now. I mean, our forefathers, you know, the war, the world war two generation, I mean, these are guys that were walking around at a thousand, right? And again, and we know that the numbers are being, you know, e extrapolated, interpolated, you know, standard mean deviations are being narrowed at the top and the bottom. But like thousand was a, t a t total testosterone. I'm sure freeze were in the 30s and 40s. And as you know, man, we're in the most contaminated environment ever. I mean, there are endocrine disrupting chemicals. There are, you know, phytoestrogens. There are particulates in the air that we breathe. You know, I always tell people this people have no idea the level of military grade, you know, industrial plastic or plasticizers that are in just the covers of our phone that when we touch and our cuticles, you know, scrape these things, I mean, God knows what goes into our skin. So, I mean, we are being contaminated. I call it a full spectrum onslaught, onslaught, right. Of contamination. And so it's like really difficult. You know, you talk about like men, I mean, I'm sure you know this cause you're a neurologist and you deal with fertility issues, but dude, it's hardest in the history of, you know, Western, you know, uh, society to, to get pregnant right now. Yeah. I mean, it is, I, I think it's multifactorial and I think part of what you're talking about is correct, but at the same time, there's no magic wand that we can tap no. to get all the plastics and BPA and all that crap out of the way. So that, you know, there are certain things that you can do sort of naturally yep. to boost your testosterone. And the, the way I explain it to my patients is your body is really smart. Yep. It only makes what it needs. Yep. So if you're a hunter and you're out on the plains killing buffalo, you need a lot of testosterone because buffalo don't like being killed. If right. you're a farmer, Farmers work really hard, but they don't kill buffalo, right? Not you quite. need testosterone, but not quite at the level of a buffalo hunter. And if you're sitting in front of a computer every day and you don't have anyone threatening you and you're not doing strenuous work, your body says, geez, I don't need that much testosterone to be effective at what I'm doing. So I'm going to make lower levels. And then if you're obese and 40 to 50% of men are obese, you get what's called aromatization. So right. men are from Mars and women are from Venus, uh -huh. but the difference molecularly between testosterone and estrogen is a single hydrogen atom. So the smallest unit right. of matter is the difference between testosterone and estrogen. So it's very easy for your body in adipose, in fatty tissue to flip testosterone to estrogen. And so, you know, the things that you can do naturally to improve your testosterone levels without taking pharmaceuticals or any of those kind of things is exercise more, strenuous exercise, weightlifting, those kind of things, uh, eating a better diet, trying to avoid processed foods and plastics and sleep. Yeah. Right. If you look at what the circadian rhythm of your day, basically your daily rhythms of testosterone, it peaks at eight o'clock in the morning. It drops down to about eight or nine o'clock at night. And then when you go to sleep, what happens? It goes back up, right? So you're making it in your sleep. So guess what? If you don't sleep well, I was or say, if you're- you sleep. <laughs> what? I said, assuming you sleep. Yeah, assuming you sleep. Don't. Yeah, well, I mean, if you're drinking alcohol late in right. the evening, it's gonna interrupt your sleep. If you're eating too much sugar, if you're staying up too late, if you're stressed, if you're on your phone, if you're watching too much TV, all that kind of stuff, you're not going to rebuild testosterone. No, no, it's hundred percent accurate. There's a lot of things you said that I would like to unpack. First off uh, again, I'll give you credit in your book because you're one of the few people that understand this. And again, you know, doc, honestly uh, I'll just say Judson for the point of emphasis. I mean, it blows my mind 
and how many people in the medicine allopathic community do not understand uh, estrogen and you know the necessary uh, re you know realization that when somebody is utilizing therapeutic testosterone uh, and I know we're talking natural adjuvants and natural optimization right now and I'll get back to that but you know they believe you need to suppress estrogen and that is actually the worst thing that you can possibly do you're creating so many downstream you know uh, potential medical issues because again can, estrogen estradiol you know it's what confers protection to our biological systems you need healthy levels of estrogen for brain health for vascular health for bone well, mineral density yeah right? bone mineral density really is is a big one and it's I mean, more more important than testosterone but the other thing is you know it's a balance right so right. if you're optimizing testosterone to super physiologic levels 1200 1300 1400 you're going to need a higher level yes. of estrogen to yes. balance that, yes. right? Now, you don't want to get too high. You don't want to get to an estrogen of 100 or 120 or 140, well, why, right? Okay, but well, I'm going to question you on that. Why? Um, because guys get breast tenderness, nipple tenderness. Um, I've seen Yeah, that's guys, all true, but that's also genetic. Gynecomastia is genetic. The only yeah. solution to gynecomastia is to surgically excise it. Yeah, I've seen... Um, guys with emotional outbursts. And you know, the yep. worst thing I've seen, I had a guy buy 10 Barbra Streisand albums. <laughs> uh, they've started watching the notebook, but no, I want to yeah. go deeper on this with you because like I said, most doctors don't understand this. I mean, I could give you, and I know this backwards and forwards, but I, I could give you a list of some of the top docs by reputation, you know, in the hormonal optimization space in the world who literally keep their patients in a narrow range of E2 levels, as you know why, because the state medical licensing boards, you know, want to see those, you know, E2 levels in that field, in that compressed range. And so I appreciate you as a physician by saying that, no, that's not true. Those laboratory ranges are not designed for men on therapeutic testosterone. And so you're right. They need healthier levels of estrogen. And look, I'm very also familiar with the science, you know, in women mostly, because that's where most of the studies are, 70 is like the minimum vascular protective level that exerts an, a, pr a protective effect. So you get all these docs who are compressing their men by using aromatase inhibitor medications. We don't have to go any deeper on that. If you want to talk for sure, go ahead. But these are not healthy for men because again, we need, as you said, healthier levels from the therapeutic testosterone, or as you call it, the super physiologic levels of testosterone. So there's a lot of confusion out there. And again, I get thousands of guys across social media platforms and email and everything who send me the protocols and say, this is what my doctor's doing. And, you know, now I see docs out there at the windmill testosterone clinics who are putting AIs in the medications themselves. So, I mean, it's literally insanity, but, but I mean, you you have to be the doctor, you know, shining the light, which you already are through your book. But now you're on the Jay Campbell podcast, so now it's a different level, bro. I mean, like you know, the the truth is, is like we personally have to let people, especially in the allopathic community, know that this is not right. And and yes, I because you know they'll come to me and they do, and they'll say, "But Jay, you're not a, it's not your license. You're not a doctor. You're you know, you just play one on the internet or whatever they say." And I'm like. I could get audited. And I'm like, bro, your job when you took the Hippocratic Oath was to heal your patient. And by keeping your uh, patient's E2 levels at 10 or 12, or I've seen them at six. Yeah. That's, that's not um, healing your I mean, patient. I, I, I've seen them come in at zero. Yes. You know, people are on rel two high doses of anastrozole. And, it, it, and so, you know, that's why I, I, I see patients the way that I do. And I write I, I write books and and YouTube right. videos and right. and I have eBooks and all that kind of stuff because you know at the end of the day I want to educate my patients and folks out there about when people understand what the science is then right. they're much more likely to be compliant with medication. For example, I put most of my TRT patients on Clomid. Right. Right. Because I need to protect testicular function, but sure. it, I think that's right. a very, very rare thing for people that are on TRT to be on either Clomid or beta HCG. Do, do you use enclomiphene or do you just use regular Clomid? Uh, I'm just sorry, regular. E, e, what is it? The eclomiphene or whatever. Is, what no, is it? I just use, Yeah, no, I just regular. I use yeah. regular Clomiphene. Yeah, I mean, 
I mean, we're, we're, we're on the same page. Uh, but I got to ask you, because why, why is this not known at this point? This is not, you and I are not sharing new. Yeah. You know, I think, um, I, I really kind of got deeper into this when I started seeing patients who, when they were younger, were taking performance enhancing drugs and they yes, were getting steroids. it from the, the gyms, the deal. And I, the bro. I, well, yeah, bro science. But I asked one, one of my patients, I'm like, well, you know, where'd you get this stuff and who'd you learn about it from? And he's like, oh yeah, there was this guy at the gym. There's always this guy, a guy at the gym. Yeah. This guy, I big Mike. Guy. <laughs> and so I, I want to thank big Mike for <laughs> actually pushing me into doing this. Cause this guy, he had Tony taken it. Yeah. He, <laughs> He had taken a 19 nor and oh. it, it suppressed permanently suppressed oh. his, his hypothalamic uh, pituitary, pituitary access, yeah. testosterone, uh, testicular axis. Yeah. And so he was infertile and yeah. he needed to be on TRT for life. And it was sort of at that moment that I realized that the thing is you don't want to be the doctor that's like the Barry Bonds Balco doctor right, right, or right. the, Victor the Lance Kansas. Armstrong doctor that's yeah. going to get in trouble. And so, you know, doctors are busy with lots and lots of stuff. Right. And so why should I get myself in trouble? Yeah. Yeah. Doing testosterone. Now I was different. I saw that there were people out there that really needed this yeah. and they were getting it from even the cops I take care of are getting it from the gym from Mexico. I, bro, it's still the same. I, I mean, yeah. So I have a, I have a compounding pharmacy in my office or a dispensing pharmacy. Nice. And we, so I get the stuff directly to my patients that comes from a legitimate source. I nice. see tons of, uh, of, of public service guys. And, uh, and if they want to go to the next level, I'll take them to the next level. But, sure. you know, we do fertility testing, we test nice. their liver, we test their estrogen, their nice. free and total testosterone. We do, you know, I, I'll, I'll do what patients want me to do because the thing is, I know if the, I'm not going to do it, then Big Mike's going to go it. find somebody to do <laughs> yeah. it for him. Right. And so and, I'll do it, yeah. but I'll I insist that they read all of my ebooks and I insist yeah. that they do it safely. Yeah, that's awesome, man. I'm I'm grateful that I you know we we had this podcast and that I know you're out there now because I mean I can you know start t sending Northern California people to you, but because dude, I mean I have like it's nonstop, but. Um, I want to go on back to fertility. I like that you're doing that. Um, I do have to ask you a question again, this is deep stuff. So this is like, you know, necessary for the universe and for, you know, the prescribing community. Cause like, there's a lot of people out there that will listen to this podcast. And a lot of these guys, I have tons of NPs and PAs and of course docs, you know, in my private membership groups um, for fertility, you said you do uh, Clomid and HCG. Mm -hmm. Do you like men over the age of where they don't give a shit anymore, right? Like a lot of these guys are getting vasectomies and whatever, but do you like them still to have some in enhanced or increased FSH and LH, uh, you know, a, 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 call it a bump, uh, you know, from a biomarker standpoint at past uh, having children or, or not. And if, and, and explain if you don't mind like your theory on why you do or don't. Well, I mean, guys like having testicles, you know, they like having testicles instead of marbles. I, I you know, yeah. I learned this when I had a, a, a Raider, an ex like Raider defender, 350 pound guy did his vasectomy and his testicles were like the size of peas. And I was like, yeah. holy shit damn, what is that all about? And then, you know, then I realized this guy was just cranking out, uh, you know, testosterone. And the thing is like uh, the question I get from a lot of my patients, you know, like 65 year old accountant is, am I going to go to a bar and beat someone up? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's so insane. dude. I'm like, <laughs> but you know, the thing is you got to understand, um, People hear that, but they don't. You're understand. Like, have you ever beat anybody yeah. up in your life? I'm like, bro? I'm like Melvin. I'm, I'm you know, uh, don't you don't have to worry. You're not gonna cold cock someone at the at the uh, country club. <laughs> but you know, if you're a football player and right. you're competing against a bunch of other twenty year olds that yeah. have a baseline testosterone of a thousand, yeah. Your testosterone has to be 2,000 or 2,500 yeah, right. in order to get a competitive advantage. Yeah. And those are the guys that uh, that 
beat someone up. Are you currently suffering from a testosterone deficiency? Are you already using therapeutic testosterone? If you are, go to tottecoded.com forward slash 10 dash questions and find out the top 10 questions you need to be asking your doctor about therapeutic testosterone. These are critical questions to ask your doctor. If they can't answer them, you need to find another doctor. Yeah. Well, I mean, look, man, I, I, and obviously I'm very familiar with all the research and, uh, optimized to, so first off, let's just step, step back. And, 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 and what you just said is more proof that the demonization and the disinformation. And again, the, let's just call it the popular media's, you know, promulgation of testosterone is so absurd. I mean, almost all of it is, 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 uh, attached to, like you said, you said it already, Balco, Barry Bonds, Roger Clemens, Sammy Sosa, Mark McGuire. And then before that, it was Ben Johnson, right? With the Olympic stuff where he used uh, a low dose of Winstrol. It didn't matter. I mean, the guy still ran a 4-2-8, right? But at the end of the day, it's all misinformation, okay? And the truth, you know, and there's, again, Harvard research studies. There's thousands of studies. And even before we had studies, uh, Judson, we had Russian, if you could read Russian and Bulgarian strength manuals, you know, they, they, they go back to the forties, but at the end of the day, optimized testosterone levels, which are balanced testosterone levels between estrogen and, and, uh, and testosterone and especially free make men surgical and tactical. You literally are balanced and controlled and you are literally in total control of your emotions. You know, people have asked me all these years, cause I've been on testosterone for so long, like, you know, is it going to make me hyper aggressive? You know, like you said, am I going to go in and beat somebody up? And I'm like, well, I have this one patient. He runs a big uh, sheet metal company in okay. San Francisco, really like big gruff guy, but really yeah. like, and he comes in every four or five months. He's like, yep. My wife and my employees told me to get my testosterone. So I'm getting mean and ornery again. You know, I mean, it changes his, his, his mood, his, his personality, um, and I, I, I agree with you. I think it's a emasculation yeah. of, uh, yeah. of, yeah. Right. and I think that, that if you really look at the literature, there are so many benefits oh. of testosterone of course. Um, that, of course. Uh, but that's part of the attack on our endocrine systems that we're talking about. But like, to my point, like if you're an asshole in your life, before you ever consider therapeutic testosterone, is it possible that therapeutic testosterone is going to make you more of an asshole? Absolutely. And that's what I always tell people. But if you are not an asshole and you're in control of your emotions and you work on your inner self and you do, you know, meditative, contemplative, introspective practices, testosterone is just going to make you more high functioning, right? And if you're a CEO, right, or you're a Wall Street trader or you're a hyper crazy, you know, podcaster, then it's going to give you more, more energy and also more information because you know the cognitive and the dopaminergic enhancement that it gives you. I mean, I, I, dude, obviously I'm pro, but I don't see anybody who does this right, especially, you know, and I define doing this right, working with a doctor knows what the F they're doing, which as you know, too many don't. There's no, there's no real downside to this. You know, people will say to me, yeah, but what happens if we have the zombie apocalypse and we can't get testosterone? <laughs> Well, that's, that's why you, that's bigger, why you're on Clomid. That's a bigger <laughs> fish to fry, even if you well, say that, right? But no, it's true. But I mean, at the end of the day, it's way better in today's day and age. Again, with the environmental onslaught, as you said it already, I don't have to say it, the emasculation of men to consider, you know, first, obviously always optimizing naturally, doing all the things you said, you know, exercise, living insulin controlled. Uh, hopefully doing cardiovascular, you know, to increase and improve the heart and all of the vascular networks. And if that doesn't work, you know, you're in a major city and you still have a severe deficiency, again, noted by lab work and symptomology, mm -hmm. symptomology first, then yes, it's great. There's, there's yeah. no negative to it. Or, you know, I, I actually have a uh, testosterone supplement, testosterone boosting supplement. So it's DHEA. I don't know if you're a big fan of DHEA or not, but most people with baseline low testosterones are deficient in DHEA. And DHEA has been shown to boost testosterone about 14%. And it includes DIM. DIM is a natural testosterone to estrogen 
uh, aromatization inhibitor. And then it's got ton some Tonkat Ali. And Tonkat Ali binds to sex hormone binding globulin. So you have a higher percentage of free testosterone. And then it's got some ashwagandha. And ashwagandha in some studies has been shown to boost testosterone. And so it suppresses cortisol, though, more than anything else. So that's why to me, it's like, a great supplement to use, but yeah, look, man, I'm not a pro. I'm not pro testosterone boosters. Not to throw shade on your testosterone uh -huh. booster. No, I'll go true. on stage and debate Andrew Huberman about this stuff any day of the week and twice on Sundays if he ever wants to do it. But he never will because he knows he can't talk with me about this stuff. And I'm very clear about that. Andrew, if you watch my podcast and you hear that, if you want to step up to the plate, my brother, let's go. But. It, once you've used the real thing, again, bioidentical testosterone, none of that shit compares. Oh, yeah. I'm just talking about for no, folks, that totally don't that saying, folks that don't want to go on folks that don't want to go on TRT. Uh, exactly. And 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 100 percent I was gonna get to that. I'm glad you pointed that out. But like I'm personally pro testosterone. And again, I'm pro testosterone again when you have a clinical need because again, the environment is so contaminated. But you're right. I mean, there's a lot of guys. Who are scared shitless for whatever the reasons are of using therapeutic testosterone. Like you said, they think they're going to go and attack the guy at the in and out at the window who gives them the wrong drink size. Right? Yeah. You didn't give me enough pickles. <laughs> These fries are wet. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, let me get back to a couple of points, but thank you. That was a great segue. Very deep. A lot of good learnings in there. So you, you know, one of yours is the most common health causes of premature death in men and the smart ways uh, to reduce risk. Now, before you answer, I want to just add, and then you can go wherever you want with it. Dude, in the last two and a half years, because of you know whatever you want to call it just happened, <laughs> it's a lot of ways to interpret it. Most people, I mean, let's face it, bro, one foot in the grave, metabolic emergencies, type two diabetes, insulin resistant, highly inflamed. Is type two diabetes now the greatest health, all causes, morbidity, risk, to Western society right now? I mean, I would have to say you're going to say yes, but I mean, is that, is that, is that where we're at now? I mean, it's way up there. Dude. I, I mean, it's, it's Dude. really, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a combination of, of things, but yeah, yeah. But I, I can tell your listeners how to dramatically improve their health in about 15 seconds. Okay. I'm counting. Hold on. Let me put the stopwatch on. All right. Yeah. Ready? Go. Don't drink. Don't smoke. Don't do drugs. Don't eat too much. Exercise every day. Sleep well. Meditate. Stretch every day and be nice to other people. Yep. And love yourself. You left that off. Yeah, there you go. All right. So that was, I think, 11 seconds. That was awesome. Yeah. Right. I mean, but, but yeah, that's great advice. But it, yeah, it's hard to do. Yeah, I was about to say, I mean, how many people meditate? I mean, I would have put meditate first. I mean, like, and you don't have to meditate, sit in the lotus position, but how many no. people go out in their backyard and put their feet in the grass and ground and just take time for themselves in the morning, even if it's five minutes. Yeah. But Very you know, few. the thing is, I mean, you have control over what right. you put in your body. That's right. You really do. Right. I mean, you, and I, when my patients come in to see me, I hold them to that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's like very few people have ever been talked to by their doctor the way that I talk to my patients. But yeah. At the end of the day, they hug me and say, you know, that's exactly what I needed. Uh, yeah. You know, you kick my ass a little it's bit, awesome, but that, that's what I needed to hear. And um, do you actually, I got to ask, I mean, you are different, cut from a different cloth, but do you take insurance? Or are you strictly? No, you know, so I had a huge insurance based I mean, I practice, did, uh, but, but about three that. years ago, uh, I, I stopped taking insurance. You yeah, know, the you thing is. To. Uh, you have to understand insurance. In my book, there's an amazing chapter on yep. health insurance. Health insurance yep. system in this country is Gone. so messed up. Biggest scam of all time. But, but you have to understand it, right? You have to understand how to get stuff paid. But at the same time, I can't do what I do for my patients and see a patient every 10 minutes. No, of course. I no. just can't. But no, but no real doctor can. And, the, and no. by the way, they didn't sign up for that bullshit. And you know, blame Obama, blame that Obamacare administration, all those scandalous attorneys, you know, who uh, that. you know, it goes, it goes, it goes way, way, way beyond. Uh, of course. Obama. But I just remember personally, you know, I always go by my personal experience. And I remember, you know, I was a wage slave then. I wasn't whatever online gypsy I am now. But like, you know, I just remember seeing my deductible go from $600 a year to 10,000, you know, family of four. 
And yeah. it's like, what just happened? This is literally like the greatest three card Monty scam, <laughs> you know, of yeah. ever that happened. Well, I think, you know, that there's a, a section in the book and uh, there's also something on the website on how to mo make the most of your time with your physician. So, you know, there have been huge studies that t say that you have about 15 minutes yeah, at right. most with your doctor. Right. Okay. So, but you can't go in there and talk about like football and your pet cat, right? You got to go in there with your entire health history typed yep. up. That's right. A list of your medications, a list of every imaging study you've ever had yep. and any other studies you have, a description of why you're there. Right. If you're there for back pain, write a whole page about your back pain. If you're there for headaches or chest pain, write a whole page about that. And then write a list of questions. Yeah. And then hand it to your doctor when you get in there. And I guarantee you, when you walk out of there, you'll have gotten what you came in there for. And you'll have a, a proper diagnosis. And the doctor will go over with you the imaging tests and the side effects of the medication. But if you go in there just dumb, like, uh, yeah, it kind of hurts like here, right, right. By the time the doctor figures out what's going on, they're going to be checking their watch. Cause the, <laughs> the, the HMO or Kaiser or their system oh. is going to be telling them it's the time for the next patient. Yeah, so the thing is like, like, okay, you can complain or you can actually do something about right. it. You can see your physician as your partner in your healthcare because they're, you know, you can read a lot of books. I mean, the thing yep. is, I got a lot of firefighters as patients, right? Yep. I could read every firefighting manual known to man, but you stick me in a three alarm fire, right? And I don't know what the heck I'm exactly. doing, right? right? There's an intuition yep. that you get. Like I can sit across from a guy and I can, I know what their testosterone level is before of I even course. get the lab. I can hear his voice and tell you. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, you know, there's an intuition that you get from practicing right. medicine and, and, right. And so that's what you're, that's what you're leveraging. It's not the, the knowledge is. So when I was a, a medical student, I did a year of Howard Hughes Medical Institute sponsored research at Harvard Medical School, right? And Harvard Medical School at that time had the single best medical library in the world, a million volumes. People would fly from all around the world, pay a lot of money to spend time in the Harvard Medical School library because sure. they had all these obscure journals, right? Now you have a phone. Yeah. Your phone yeah. is as powerful as a Harvard Medical School yeah. library. So you can you can you have access to the same knowledge that everyone else does, but it's that sort of inner voice, second sense that you develop as a physician that really differentiates. And that's what you need to partner with. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, awesome. You said a lot. Uh, I, you know, I want to unpack that even more. I mean, man, the truth is, is like. People, let's just go deeper with what you said. It's a bifurcation now, Doc. I mean, you literally are, as I, and, and, and I kind of coined this, I stole it from some other people I heard it and I made it into my own, but uh, you have to become the proactive scientist of your own health. Absolutely. So that's exactly what you just described. You have to do your homework, do your research, bring all of that to the table, to your physician. Now, of course, we're talking about docs like you. We're not even talking about insurance docs, but let's just be honest. The so society is bifurcated now. It's people like, you know, you and me who literally say, I'm going to spend between five and $10,000 on my personal health every year. And maybe that's low, but that's the average, you know, for people like us. And then it's the, but my copay is $40 and this is what I can afford. Right. So it's like, you're one or two of those people. And again, if you're choosing the copay side, then you are going to be the statistic. And the statistic is you're 60 and you're on 15 to 20 color-coded medications and you're in that cottage industry where you're buying things to label so you don't get them confused and you know it's, you know get side effects and crossover and contraindications or you're like you know me and you're seeing a doc like you and you you have a, a plan a master plan to live to 90 100 110 yeah. 120 years old but the and thing so is kind of where we you are. know so you sort of have to execute on that plan. You have to understand where all those medications come from, right? right. You're a, a doctor. You got a patient that comes in and they have high blood pressure. And so you got to put them on a blood pressure medication because you got to get their blood pressure down because you have metrics that you have to, to right. achieve in your, right. in your HMO, right? Insane, I, I'm, I'm different because I have more time. And so 
I put um, most of my patients on a nitric oxide booster and I get them off of their blood pressure medications. Yeah, right, and right, I right. encourage them to exercise, to lose weight, and I give them a plan on how to do that. And I encourage, you know, we have a Brandeis MD Elite Fitness Challenge. By the end of the year, my patients have to prove that they lost weight. Nice. You know, they, they lost fat. And gained muscle, and then they get a, a special edition T-shirt. You know, I mean, I play all these games with my patients to kind of engage them in the process of taking better care of themselves. But you know, unfortunately, our health system hasn't created the motivation for a lot of people no. to engage in that. No, and it goes back to, bro. People are literally enslaved by their devices now. They're so lazy. You know, everybody wants an, is there an app for that? That's what I was going to say to you. You know, I, I was going to interrupt when you were talking about like doing your homework and most people would say, is there an app for that doc? You know, cause like it's the lowest common denominator. Technology has created an easy button mentality. What can I do that is the least effort and the least effect to get what you tell me I need to get, right? Nobody wants to put it in the work. You know, you said nine things in set 11 seconds, you know, and I added, I think a 10th. And the truth is, how many people are going to do that? That's a good 5%, question. Five percent, maybe, and that's well. The people that you okay, so work with. you know the the first and last chapters of my book are on the hero's journey. You know the the first chapter explains it, and the last one talks about my own personal hero's journey. It's about the only chapter in the book that I really talk about myself because the book really is about men. It's for men, yeah, about awesome men. Um, but I, I think the problem is. In society, we look at other people as heroes. We don't see ourselves as heroes. And that, right. you know, to me, that's like, I mean, I feel really sad for Tom Brady. And I, I really feel sad for um, Johnny Depp, right? Um, but that's the, the, the greatest thing about those things, right? Like Tom Brady, like the greatest quarterback ever, the hottest wife ever. But he's miserable, right? right. He's getting right. a divorce. Johnny right. Depp, right? A movie star, good-looking guy, women's throwing themselves at him. But did you listen to what happened in that court yeah. case? She's throwing knives at him and and like his life is more messed up than my life. Yep. Right. So don't project your, your own right. insecurities on someone else's life. Right. Focus on your own problems right. and solving your own problems. And, and then you can make some progress. Are you using therapeutic peptides? Are you a new user? Maybe an advanced user? Maybe you're considering starting peptides. Highly recommend going to the link right below the peptidescourse.com forward slash 10 dash mistakes and download my PDF and learn what not to do before starting therapeutic peptides. I mean, why fo good and well said. I mean, why focus on anyone else's life? You don't even yeah. have you only have control over your reaction to what goes on in your life and around you, right? So you have two choices at all times. You can react out of fear, which you know, if we're on the vibrational scale, is what 80% of people do, right? Because it's instinctual to react out of fear. You know, somebody cuts you off on the road and you road rage and you grab your steering wheel and you motherfuck up and all that stuff, right? That's what most people do. Or you can come from a multi-dimensional uh place of awareness, you know, kind of the neutral position, and you can choose to respond out of love and choosing to respond out of love is complex because you actually have to think about how you're going to respond. You have to think of what you want to say and you want to do it so that it's in resonance so that what you say benefits the person that, you know, quote unquote, caused you distress or whatever it is. Right. And, and this is in every level of life, Judson. Absolutely. Yeah. No question. I like but, when you, I like when I get you to that place. See, that's, we just created a resonant energy field and you were like, yeah, cool. Yeah, I'm digging it. We're on the same page. Yeah. yeah. So you have two more talking points. And by the way, this has been awesome. Uh, why so few men reach their true potential? Yeah. I mean, it goes back to the, the hero's journey. 
Mm-hmm. I mean, if you go through this, I'll, I'll very briefly go through some of the stages of the hero's journey. I mean, there are there are people that never leave the comfort of of their home. You know, the the right. the, the prom king and queen that uh, that never leave home, never actually get to the point where they achieve their true potential. And then people that try to leave home, but their family and friends, you know, are needy and 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 sort of drag them back. Uh, and prevent them from from doing that. And then once you get on your journey uh, to fight the dragons, you know sometimes the dragons win. You know, and and people crash and burn. Right. You know, there's drugs and alcohol and 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 all sorts of stuff and all sorts of reasons that people get off track or sidetracked. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, you know, if you achieve your vision for yourself, um, you still have to get home. Yeah. Uh, and 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 there's a transformation that occurs right yeah. so you know luke skywalker could never go back to you know his planet or in the Ta- lord of the tatooine. rings tatooine yeah tatooine or in the uh, in the lord of the rings you know the bilbo couldn't hang out at the shire for much longer he spent the whole book talking about how great the shire was and then after he went through that transformational journey and got back to the Shire, he found that he couldn't really hang there for very long because he had he had changed as a person. So uh, it's not easy achieving your true potential. And uh, for me, it's just been about determination and, and just keep going. Awesome, man. Determination and discipline. I'll add discipline to that. Discipline, yeah. So many people don't have discipline today. But man, we are on such the same wavelength. I was literally probably reading your mind. Have you watched the, the you're doing the man? Jedi. You're I'm looking at you now. You're like doing the Jedi mind mill. No, I'm not going to do any mind tricks. I can do that to you, but you don't, ah, that's not your I don't deal. think you want to be in my mind. That's not your deal. No, uh, no, I wouldn't actually read your mind. I would just like manipulate your frequency, but oh, okay. No, but, um, the newest, the, the Amazon, uh, the rings show is fantastic. Have you seen it yet? I have not. No, dude. If you're a Lord of the Rings fan, you got to yeah. watch it. I mean, it's I actually, uh, I, one of my, one of my patients owns the rights to the Lord of the Rings. Wow. Very nice. I think he made a quarter of a billion dollars selling the rights to Amazon. To, oh, wow. Good for him. Yeah. Uh, is he on therapeutic testosterone? <laughs> I don't know. I got to call him. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know. Yeah. You're his dog. I, I, I haven't seen him for a while. I got I think, you. That's so yeah. cool though. No, but you got to watch it. It's literally fantastic. I mean, right. I have an absolute Lord of the Rings trilogy. Oh yeah, door. huge, huge. It's 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 fantastic. I thought it would be absolute garbage, and it's fantastic. I mean, it's literally like Peter Jackson did it. Yeah, well, that's anyway. that's the that's the archetype of the hero's journey. Yeah, absolutely, the, the yeah. Bilbo and Frodo's journeys. Well, so you know the storyline. Just so you know, is really you know the similarity. You know, which was obviously uh, what's his name uh, Tolkien's. You know, the origin story. So it's like way before it's fascinating, but it's just, I can't, I'm blown away at how good it is. Anyway, last point again, thank you for coming on profound podcast. Uh, the three things that men can do today to begin to take charge of their health journey. Yeah. I think, you know, the most important thing is to be the hero of your own journey. That's right. To see the, the decisions that you make every day as the most important decisions in the world and that you haven't, your decisions have an impact on you and your family and your community. Uh, and I think the second thing is really take care of yourself. That's right. You know, ain't nobody going to take care of you, right? You know, everyone is focused on taking care of themselves and, and society has taught a lot of men to take care of others and take care of yourself last. Um, but at a certain point that breaks down, you know, yeah. guys come to see me. I look guys in the eye and I say, you know, you're here for a reason. You just drop out of the sky. You're here because you're ready to make a change to ready to make a shift. Right. Right. And the quicker you get to that point and understand the things that you need to do, the better. And the third thing is it's pretty damn simple. That's right. Don't drink, don't smoke, don't do drugs, don't eat too much, exercise every day, meditate, sleep, stretch, be nice to others, and love yourself. Ah, you added it in. Good there you go. Me. I got a perfect 10. Oh, damn, you're amazing. Uh, 
I mean, I really don't have much to add to that. I mean, I, I would just invert it because so when I, and I don't do it very often now because I charge way too much money, but when I coach men, that's the first step. That's the first statement. You know, I'm like, look, you're here because you know, I'm a master of, you know, I'm an essential alchemist alchemist. So I can help you, you know, expand who you are as a being, but like, I got to ask you because like none of my information, none of my knowledge, none of my 30 years in the trenches is going to do shit for you unless you actually feel worthy of becoming that person. And I know you do the same thing. So like, that's a total inverse spin because you, what you said also, we're very much on the same wavelength, brother. Like so many men put everything before themselves. Yeah. You say to them, like, what's your mission? What's your purpose in life? My wife, my kids, my job. No, dude, that's none of those things. Like, do you love and trust yourself? And it's like, they will literally look at you like you're insane. Like you're talking to them in a way that they don't understand. Yeah. But you, you have to ask some simple but profound questions. Like when I talk to patients about alcohol, I, you know, for me, I stopped drinking about 10 years ago. It was probably the best decision, Good the best you, health man. decision I made. And I, I ask guys, you know, why do you drink? And they just kind of like, they tilt their head and they kind of look at me like. I watch the beer commercials, bro. Yeah. I mean, uh, that's what I say is that, you know, there's trillions of dollars of marketing spent on convincing you to drink Subliminal poison. Messaging. Yeah, but I mean, you know, and, and but then when you actually think about it and you understand like either you're addicted or it's habitual or you really, really enjoy the taste of alcohol. And no one does. And no one. I mean, yeah, let's be honest. It's a fucking does. solvent. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so but, you know, you have to you have to under, really understand why you're in the patterns that you are. And when she, once someone asks you those simple but profound questions about why you're doing the things that you do, um, then that's the first step in really changing it. That's exactly right. Well said. Um, I mean, look, all this is profound. This is a profound podcast. I'm really grateful that you came here today to talk to me. Uh, I wish that I was a little bit more energized, uh, you know, intellectually, because I've already, you're my fourth podcast today and every one of them has been profound. And it usually is like the last one uh, that is like, it catch me off, you know, catch catches me unsuspecting because it was so profound. I mean, look, I thought I was just going to do an allopathic, you know, pinochle shuffle with you. And like, <laughs> we've talked about amazing things, like the really important things about life today. But uh, I mean, men, you know, men really do need to, you know, the hero's journey as you call it, but I just call it, you know, a real soul search. And like, it's okay to embrace your divine feminine. It's okay to realize that you do have to put yourself first. Cause judge, and you know, this, if you don't love and trust yourself, you're not loving your wife and kids in the way that you want to love them. And if you think that you are, you're just confused. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm totally with you. 100%. And like you said, it's not easy. And no. these are not places, there are not many places that men can go to have these really intelligent, you know, empathic, uh, imp compassionate, non judgmental conversations. I mean, like I said, I mean, the average, you know, you know, Joe, tough guy, you know, alpha male isn't going to talk to this about this, but it's like, dude, if you don't love and trust yourself, you will never feel worthy. You will never take Judson's advice. You will never do the 10 or 11 things that you have to do in 11 seconds that will make your life easy because you don't see yourself as valuable enough to ever accomplish any of that. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree with you more. Bro, you're yeah. amazing. So if people want to work with you, connect with you, you know, potentially podcast with you, uh, where would you have them go? Yeah. So my medical practice website is brandeismd.com, B-R-A-N-D-E-I-S-M-D.com. And I'm up in Northern California. I do some telehealth stuff, but I really like my office is really cool. We have just amazing stuff. Uh, you know, so when I see someone, I do body composition analysis. Nice. I do genetic nutritional testing. We just added VO2 max testing. Nice. Uh, you know, I am a, a national spokesperson for M Sculpt and M Sella, so I Dude, can I build. I use the M Sculpt Neo. I absolutely love it. My isn't life that the greatest? Music. I just finished uh, a, a study <laughs> on uh, using the M Sculpt Classic 
on industrial athletes, so police, fire, SWAT, and corrections. And we built- Strengthens our core, unbelievable. Yeah, well, we built arm strength, well, mass, right? So yeah, I'm, looking yeah, yeah. At, I'm looking at muscle mass sure. arm, in the arm, about 15% with six treatments. That's insane, yeah. Right? This is above and beyond what these yeah. guys are doing in the gym. In the gym, and right. Just hopping on the, the, the M-Sculpt biceps and triceps, 20 minutes each side, for six treatments and they're building an extra 15% muscle mass. I put a pound, almost a pound of muscle on my right arm and a half a pound of muscle on my left arm in six treatments. What did that translate to like inches? Cause you know, bro, it's the size of your biceps that matter. Yeah. Well, you know, so <laughs> I, 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 I agree with you, but um, <laughs> I, I'm a numbers guy. And, uh, and so <laughs> My my um, in body body composition analysis machine will give you me down to the hundredth of a pound of muscle. That's awesome, man. And then I'll, I also used a uh, an investigational microvascular ultrasound um, protocol. Actually, the this is these are my numbers right here, right? Yeah. So, um, um, and it to look at muscle density and the growth of new blood vessels. So how old gonna, are you? I'm guessing you're like 45. How old are you? Yeah, I'm 55. Fucking a, dude, that's awesome. I'm almost 52, but you definitely wow. look like you're 45. But um, yeah. I, I got my VO2 max tested yesterday. I was. Dude, you do not look 55. I'll I mean, I, I, I will definitely tell you to the truth if you look 70. <laughs> I don't fuck around, bro. I'm Jake Campbell. I tell you the truth. No, but you look great. And oh, thanks. Do you have bio? Do you have all the biohacking tools? Okay, so I do want to give you something that my uh, deep tissue. She does cranial sacral, very advanced uh, body worker. So uh, my wife and I use EM Sculpt Neo, and my wife uses on her glutes. I just use the abs because, bro, the six pack is all that matters. Okay. But um, the tr well, so look, yeah. if you use beyond 70, uh, it really does throw out your central nervous system. I mean, it, it, it's, it's traumatic. So I've actually like learned that I, I'm at 70. I'm good. I'm not throwing my body completely out of whack again from a, you know, central nervous system. I don't have all sorts of like horrific you know, imbalances that she has to put me back in. But I mean, we had to play around with it because you know me, I'm like hundred, hundred, you know, I want to look unbelievable. I want to like max, you know, using the test, the coil contraction of the abdominal wall and all that stuff. But 70, yeah. it seems like is the one place that, you know, people can go where they're not going to have all these massive imbalances, not to say you won't get results, but there's definitely a price to pay. So, so what I, I recommend is to do abs and glutes. Yeah. Um, you know, I have a congenital lower spine, issue nothing yep. serious but yep. uh, i've ended up with one epidural and i never want to get to that point again no. and so i actually teach men or my patients in general how to stand because cool. most people actually don't even understand no, their how posture to stand is horrific. they're like this how to engage their their anterior and posterior chains yeah. to support the torso and the head weight as opposed to allowing the spine to bear that burden right. and rub out their discs it's funny you say that because um, it was a great gut check for me because we started using it in May, right? So I'm going, I'm coming up on six months of treatment and uh, it's profound. I mean, I, I look better and I'm stronger now core wise than I've ever been in my whole life. And I've always been strong, uh, but uh, I had to really, really Judson focus on my lower back and my erector spinae. And that is something that that machine definitely, you know, enforces that like, Hey, if you're going to get strong in the front, in the core, you also got to now work the erectors. And, and, and I'm you know, very clearly, I don't use uh, the glutes like my wife does. You know, my wife is much more doing both, but, uh, but since I started really focusing on my erectors, I mean, I've got a really nice, you know, low back traction thing in my third car garage that I use. And I, every day I do two sets now and I've never been stronger from a spinal, you know, quote unquote, uh, you know, just, you know, posture standpoint, like yeah. I am strong. Like I can do 20 reps, you know, low back extensions, like full on, you know, hold and contract, you know, with a 25 pound plate, you know, for two sets at will. Whereas before, you know, if I get to 10, you know, 11, 12, it would start being like, wow, that's, you know, I need to stop. 
So there's no question the EM sculpt is amazing technology. And dude, look, we'll end the show just by saying like, we're on the dawn, if not there now, the verge of a biomedical revolution. I mean, there is so much amazing technology coming into the forefront. I know you said you're a buyer, but like, I just hope that we don't blow ourselves up because I want to see what comes in the next 10 to 15 years. Cause it's insane. Yeah. I, you know, the, I, I totally agree with you, but I see that half of our, more than half of the folks are going in one direction That's and then there are folks it. like you and I that are, are, are rocketing in the, in the opposite direction. Right. You know, I was, I, I had a, a patient from Facebook yesterday. Like I, I, I get tons of patients from I'm Facebook, sure. Google, Tesla, right. um, Oracle, Lawrence Livermore lab. So I, I actually kind of have like a, this window into the future and, you know, he works on VR, you know, he's one of the VR executives for, uh, for Facebook. And I asked him and he's like, you know, it's really cool helping to shape the future, but at the same time, you see the detrimental the effects no. that the this metaverse is going to have. Dude, no way. The, you know, the thing is, he was saying, like, if you have these VR goggles on, you're gone. You're and gone. you have someone look at like a path. Like, yeah. you know, in the Lord of the Rings, they're crossing those bridges right. and there's right. like fire pits down below. Yes. Right. You cannot get no. someone to walk off no. the path, no. even though they know. I, I I have VR glasses on. That's right. It's That's a right. flat floor in a That's room right. I've been before. Yeah, they bro, will not walk off the bridge. It's the most powerful form of entrainment. You know, I tell people this all the time. I know you're familiar with it, but that video, you know, slash documentary on Netflix, the social program or the social dilemma. Yeah. I mean, they're telling you these guys left Facebook because they knew that it was a DARPA military program to literally control the masses, you know, again, from an information and entrainment, you know, just call it indoctrination or mind control. But dude, you're right. What you said will end the show. You know, I call it the bifurcation. You're either going to be divine, empowered, sovereign, and free human, right? And you'll 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 use technology not to be controlled or enslaved by it, but to benefit from it, like you're doing in your practice, like I'm doing every day. And then the other people will be literally hooked in the metaverse. And their consciousness, I mean, again, I don't want to go too woo-woo and put my tinfoil hat on, but I can make a very cogent argument that their consciousness will be hijacked. And at what point do they even have humanity anymore if they're literally giant fat slugs who don't go to the bathroom or exercise or do anything, but they're entrained to that like that VR goggles? And I'm sure it'll evolve and iterate from there. <laughs> yeah. And so the question is, though, and I'll ask you, and you can end it by, you know, do do people like us who won't go there, are we living on communes, bro? Ha, ha, ha. I'm going to Mexico with you, dude. I mean, you might have to. Make some room Rica, in your house. <laughs> Costa Rica. I mean, I mean, I'm telling you, that's really the question that people like us, you know, I call us conscious entrepreneurs. It really is the question that we all have to start looking at very deeply because if the cities become metaverse, you know, uh, castles, you know, enslavement chambers, whatever you want to call them. Like, where do people like us go? Cause I'm not giving up my humanity, bro. Ever. It's crazy. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. I don't either. Yeah. I like when you get really silent cause I know you're impacted, but uh, brother, I love you and appreciate you. I appreciate you coming on today. So guys and gals, all you guys that support the Jay Campbell podcast, support the amazing people like Dr. Judson Brandeis, BrandeisMD.com. He's in Northern California. He may or may not uh, do a telehealth uh, consult with you, especially if you say, hey, I watched you on Jay Campbell. And I really want to work with you. But uh, remember, raise your vibration to optimize your yeah. love creation. We will see all of you guys very soon.